In a previous video, I exported data from QuickBooks into Excel, which was crappy. So I connected QODBC to QuickBooks and pulled the data over into Access. That was much better. So in this video, we're going to export the data out of Access into Excel, work really hard to prepare the spreadsheet for import into Sin7. This is the biggest job there is when setting up a new software program. So we have no, hopefully, no error messages. So in Access, we're going to go to the external data section and then go to export right here and export to Excel. I'll call it QuickBooks customers from Access. Now I've got data we can work with. All we need is the template instructions from Sin7 to show us what layout the data should be in. To find that, go to Sin7, go to CRM, go to Actions, and Import Contacts. Click here to download the CRM template. That takes us to the Sin7 website. And if we scroll down a little bit on the CRM website, we'll see Download our CRM Import Template. There it is in the bottom left-hand corner. We just downloaded, so I'll open that. And this tells us the names of the headers that Sin7 will be looking for. If we name our headers these names on the other spreadsheet, then this will make a lot more sense to Sin7 and make our life a lot easier when we import it into Sin7. So that's the next step. Do that. Put the Sin7 template on one monitor and the, temp and the spreadsheet with the data you want to prepare to import on the other monitor and start renaming the columns. You can also delete columns you don't need. If you're unsure about deleting the column, delete the column header and that will hide it from view if you don't think you need it. Delete, don't need that, delete, don't need that, delete. I need this for reference so I'm not going to delete the whole column, I'm just going to delete the column header. Rename this column primary company as the Sin7 template suggests. Hide that, don't need that. Sin7 already recognizes that field and already recognizes that field. I couldn't find a field in Sin7 for salutation or for middle name, so I'm going to delete the headers. To make it more manageable, turn data filters on like this. Click and then freeze panes like this. Select the column, click view, click freeze panes, and freeze panes. Now we can scroll up and scroll to the right without losing the reference of what we're looking at. The Sin7 billing address columns are a little bit different, so change your QuickBooks data spreadsheet to match those columns. Billing address 1, billing address 2. Oh, we got a problem here. The street address on this customer is way over under billing address 4. We may have to do a little bit of manual cleanup work on this part. You'll see that most of the street addresses are under billing address 2 and then most of the company names or attention twos are under billing address one. But Sin7 only has two lines for billing addresses, which is reasonable. I can eliminate billing address one and shift this data over. Look in this column to see if there's anything there. There's nothing, so delete it. Look in this column, nothing there. Notice this says store number 445, but over here it says the same thing. So we really don't need this at all. Okay, I cleared all the data out of these two columns that I don't need. It didn't take long. Sin7 calls this billing city. Sin7 calls this billing state. I don't need this column. Delete. I don't need this column. Delete. Sin7 calls this column billing postal code. There's nothing in that column. There's nothing in that column. So I'm going to delete them. If you can't see what's in the columns, select the columns, mass select the columns, hover your mouse over until you see this little symbol, and then stretch the column out just a little bit, and it'll stretch them all out at the same time. These look like duplicates of the ones that I just cleaned up, so I'm going to delete those. And here we probably have to do the same thing again to these shipping addresses that we just did to the billing addresses. Sin7 calls the shipping addresses delivery says delivery instead of ship. So let's use that word, delivery. Code. Then the data in these columns we don't need, so I'm going to delete it. Delete it. 
delete it. Look over here to see what Sin7 uses for phone. There's a filling, there's a billing phone column, and there's another phone column right here. This phone is for the contact details. And this phone is for the billing details if it is different than the contact details. So just call the phone phone, and that's what's used, so that's perfect. People are still using fax machines, they should see a therapist. <laughs> email is called email. Nothing in that column, delete. There's nothing in that column, delete. If you keep the column, it will just confuse you in the future step. Sin7 wants the contact type to be customer if we're importing customers. So I'm going to add this column, contact type. Your template does not have to be in the exact same order. It does not have to have the exact same names. It's just easier if it is. Sin7 does not have a contact field. It just has a first and last name field, so we can get rid of that. Or if that scares you, delete the header to hide it. Don't need any of that. Delete. Sales rep, we want that. Keep that, except we're going to have to convert those into names, not initials. Nothing there, nothing there. Empty fields. So you don't lose your data. Be sure to save it in mid-stride and save it in CSV format if you plan on importing it in anytime soon. It's interesting to note that on the template that Sin7 provides, there are 41 possible fields to import data into. But on the import screen, when you click on this drop-down and count the number of fields, there's actually 52 fields that you can import into. So that means there's 10 more fields that you can import into than what's on the template. Don't confuse payment methods with payment term. A payment term is when your customer agrees to pay. A payment method is in what way do they agree to pay. In other words, check, credit card, wire transfer, ACH. Those are payment methods. A payment term is due on receipt or pay in advance or net 30. Those are payment terms. Be sure to watch for fields like this. I call it a drop down field. If you're importing data into the stages field, for instance, here's what it looks like on the template, then your data has to match one of these words exactly. Or say sales rep, it has to match one of these names exactly. So use the Excel find and replace feature to replace the abbreviations with a name. Okay, I replaced all those abbreviations to names. Now this column's interesting. This is the data that came out of QuickBooks, but we don't have these data, these exact names for our prices in SIN7. Here's a list of all the different prices pricing groups, pricing levels. So we need to set these five pricing levels up manually in SIN7 first before we can import this because this is one of those fields that has to match exactly. Those fields have to match these pricing tiers. So SIN7 calls it a pricing tier. On the template, SIN7 calls it a pricing option. Remember, this template can be used for importing customers or suppliers, so the wording might be a little bit different. So go to Settings and edit your pricing tiers. Now you see the pricing tiers in Excel match the pricing tiers in SIN7. All right, let's go to the next column. These last three fields are interesting. Field, Ship Account, Ship Method, and Ship Vendor. These are the default shipping fields for the customer, meaning you've agreed with your customer to ship it using a certain carrier and to use their shipping account number and to use a certain service to ship. But since 7 wasn't designed originally to manage warehouse operations, shipping and receiving, for instance, SIN7 was originally designed to oversee your inventory in third-party warehouses. 3PLs, FBA, Fulfillment by Amazon being one of those. So when we look on the SIN7 import template, we don't see anything like those fields. And when we look in all of the available fields to import into, we don't see any fields like that. When we look on the customer screen, we see a field that might be carrier or carrier service field, but we can't import into it. And when a new sales order is created, 
in SIN7, that field doesn't appear anywhere. On the sales order in SIN7, there is a carrier field, but it's just a text field. It's not a drop down and it's not a default carrier. So what I did is added three custom fields for those three columns, carrier service, carrier account number, default carrier, and then renamed the column headers right there. So take a look at my video on how to create custom fields in SIN7 and watch the next video. In the next video, we're going to import all of this data. We got the spreadsheet ready. It's ready to import. Now let's import it.